careful with this stuff. Full disclosure, I never played any games from the Tiberium universe prior to making this video. I only played a ton of generals and a bit of red alert. I have to say that I am pleasantly surprised. Tiberium Wars seems like it has a lot of character and polish. Mostly, anyway. For this video, I'm going to be talking about five vehicles. The GDI Predator, the GDI Mammoth, the GDI Juggernaut, the Nod Scorpion, and the Nod Flame Tank. We'll be following the same format as always. Now let's jump into it. First up is the Predator Tank. As far as the Predator's hull goes, the ballistic protection is pretty good. It's pretty well angled and doesn't present a large profile, though the whole front should extend a little bit further. Extending the hull would give the driver more room, increase the armor, but also increase the weight. But I doubt that weight is much of an issue here. The tank itself seems pretty reasonably sized. It's kind of hard to tell since the scale is so off in this game. Next is the turret. I actually really like the way this turret looks. It has a pretty unique look while also being practical. It's also low profile, though the back of the turret doesn't need to be angled like that. You'd be better off giving it more of a square shape, so you can have more space in the turret. Another plus for the turret is that it has visible sensor equipment. And now onto the weapons. The main gun is external to the turret, which is good because it allows for better depression angles, though it looks like the main gun would have limited ammunition capacity. Mostly because the turret back is angled. A big problem for the Predator is that it has no machine guns. That's obviously bad for if you need to engage infantry. But it's also really frustrating, because the thing next to the main gun looks like it should hold a machine gun or a cannon. Now let's talk about the crew. I don't see any space for the driver in the hull. It could be like the MBT-70, but I only see one cupola and that's likely for the commander. Also, the MBT-70 setup presents its own problems, mostly nausea for the driver. Next is that the commander's cupola is located where the ammunition should logically go. The cupola also has no vision devices. This isn't a product of how old the game is either, since the mammoth has them. Now you might be thinking, these wouldn't be issues if it was a one-man tank, but it's not because the voice actor says that the crew is ready, not just him. And lastly, performance. And yet again we have a sci-fi tank with quad tracks. I really should start counting these things. How many has it been so far? Got the Scorpion, got the Grizzly, got the Fallout 4 tank. So including this one we're up to 4 tanks so far. But it does give me an opportunity to talk more about quad tracks, and why they aren't all that useful. The main reason that people say that quad tracks aren't all that bad, is because it allows you to move if one track is disabled. But it's not as simple as that. If, say, your front right track is destroyed, you need to disable the front left track too, otherwise you'll just be going in circles. And if you do that, you now have half the power that you would usually, so you wouldn't be moving very fast at all, especially not fast enough to reverse out of a bad situation. And the whole point of a quad track is nullified if both tracks on the same side are disabled. You'd be better off having two sets of tracks, so you could have lower ground pressure. And speaking of ground pressure, the Predator doesn't have to worry about it, because these tracks are absolutely massive. This greatly reduces ground pressure, but it also increases the amount of work that needs to be done to move those tracks around, so it will likely lead to a decrease in overall speed. Also, the rear tracks are angled up in the air for some reason, so they're there for no reason. If they're up in the air, they're not distributing weight and they're not moving the tank at all either. Now let's move on to the Mammoth tank. As far as the hull goes, it's obviously pretty massive, but it gets a bit of a pass this time. The Mammoth is supposed to be used for long duration missions, so the massive size kind of makes sense. It still makes it a great target for artillery and aircraft though. The Mammoth also has the same problem as the Predator tank, where the front plate doesn't extend as far as it should, especially since the driver's position is so far forward. The same can be said for the rear hull. Extending it can leave more room for fuel, making it even better at long duration missions. There's not much to say about the turret, only that it's pretty well shaped for ballistic protection. As far as the weapons go, the guns seem to be completely fixed in elevation. I don't think the turret itself angles either, so you better hope that your target is at the exact range where the guns will hit it. There also doesn't seem to be enough space for ammunition stowage. The Mammoth also has no machine guns, but it does have missile pods, so I guess that's not as bad. Now onto the crew accommodations. The cupola on the turret has no visibility to the sides, since the ridge things for the guns get in the way. The driver's position also seems way bigger than it needs to be, and the doors between the tracks are also a potential weak spot. The Mammoth also has quad tracks, though they're at least on the ground this time, and the insanely wide tracks are probably a necessity with how large the Mammoth is. Each track pod supposedly has two motors in it, which seems superfluous. Now let's talk about the Juggernaut, which is uh... First up is the hull, I guess. Does this thing even have a hull? Where do you store the engine and the fuel? It's all just gun and legs. It also has a very thin and vulnerable waist, 
Uh, at least it isn't a humanoid mech. Now onto the turret. The turret is the entire body section, which seems pretty horrible for balance because the entire thing rotates. That's a ton of mass that needs to be rotated and elevated. It would need massive mechanical components, and likely be very slow. Now onto the weapons. The Juggernaut takes the dual gun setup to the next level by having three massive guns. I don't think dual gun setups are bad, at least not if the guns are reasonably sized, but sci-fi universes always make them huge. There are no visible sights for these guns, and I'm also not sure where the guns load from, but hey it has smoke grenades that will likely only conceal it from the kneecaps down, but it's a start. And just like the last two vehicles, it has no auxiliary weapons. The guns also seem to have an open breach mechanism thing. It seems like a really good way to get debris in the cannon. Now let's talk about the crew. Crew is contained in a glass canopy to the side of the turret. This is obviously awful for protection and seems like it would be very disorienting to drive. To their credit, the legs are thick like they would have to be, and the feet are pretty large too, though it would still have worse ground pressure than a tank. Also, the Juggernaut does this cool thing where it leans back and deploys these pads for extra stability. That's a really nice detail. Now onto the first Nod tank, the Scorpion. The hole is pretty much non-existent since everything is located in the turret. This gives the Scorpion a very high center of gravity. Also, the spars holding the tracks to the hole look very vulnerable. Also, just like on the Juggernaut, where does the power pack and the fuel go? Now onto the turret, which makes up like 90% of this vehicle. The turret would likely have a very slow traverse rate since the majority of the weight is in it, but it has a nice ablative shape, so I guess that's good. Now onto weapons. The main gun is good depression angles, but there are also no auxiliary weapons. Should I make a counter for this too? Now let's talk about the crew. The crew is contained within a glass cockpit, which is obviously bad for protection, and since the driver turns with the turret, it would likely be very difficult to drive. Or impossible, actually. Now onto performance. There's this third track pod in the back which supposedly gives it better maneuverability, though in practice it wouldn't do anything besides make the tank yaw, which tanks can already do, thanks to regenerative steering. Now onto the final vehicle, the flame tank. There's really not a whole lot to say about this that hasn't been said about the Scorpion, so I'll just skip straight to weapons. The flamethrowers have these absolutely massive fuel tanks which are just begging to get shot, and the fuel lines are also exposed. This thing is just as dangerous to the Nod as it is for the GDI. Now onto the crew. Instead of a glass canopy, it has just glass windows, which is an improvement, I guess? And for performance, quad tracks. And that's about everything. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.